Good morning, YouTube, and today I'll be profiling for you my updated Ancient Warriors deck. Um, it's got a couple of new cards from Rise of Duelists, so let's just hop right into it and check out these changes. Starting off, we still just play a playset of each of the fire attribute ones. Um, so, the reason why we like to run the Fearsome and the Ambitious is because they allow you to extend a little bit more during your battle phase, and that's what the, this deck primarily is designed for, is for going for, for damage and OTKs and whatnot. But there are definitely a lot of other options you can do. But these guys both special summon themselves when um, Ancient Warriors are involved in battle, and they both have additional effects when doing so. Um, the reason we run the Deceptive because it gives you another attribute, which comes into a little bit of effect with some of our choices for the cards in here. He has a decent effect um, that, that cuts attack, but it's not the most insane effect. But we still decided to run one of each of the fires. Moving on to our wins, uh, we run one of the Valiants. Um, you definitely want to run at least one. Um, I've seen people run two, um, and I could definitely see the argument. He just is special summonable whenever you control two Ancient Warrior monsters, and um, if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, he can make up a two battle or attacks during the battle phase. Um, and then additionally, he gains 300 attack for each monster your opponent controls. So he can get really, really big, and he's special summonable, 2700 beat stick, not terrible to start off with. Um, and then we still run a playset of the Loyal. Um, I love him so much because he's just a special summonable monster. He can pop a card on the field. Um, he's 2,500 attack. I, I love him because then if you special summon him, try and bait out any attacks and stuff or any effects and whatnot, then you can proceed with your actual normal summons and then get off plays that you would want to do. So I like him at three. Next we're on a playset of the Virtuous. Uh, he's one of the best. He, he not only gets you to add cards, from your deck to your hand, he allows you to draw, he has battle protection, all in all one of the best ones in the deck. His stats aren't much to bark about, but his effects are definitely pretty darn decent. Uh, next we're on a playset of the Ingenious. Just the blanket negates whenever um, he's brought out, it just, just makes, thing, makes him so much more viable, and he's a 2,000 defense dude. Um, and just like, as in terms of uh, what Ancient Warriors you want to run, um, it's definitely arguable. Um, I like to run as many different names as possible, but you could definitely change that up. But I like him as three. Moving on with our Waters. Uh, run a playset of Son Mu, uh, the Masterful. I like him because he allows you to add from your deck to your hand. Um, and you can compulse return a card to your opponent's hand, which is fantastic. Works definitely in tandem with uh, the new Link. We do run a placet of the Graceful. Um, I like him because A, he's another attribute. Um, B, he allows you just continue, just send your continuous spells, which that's what something you want to do a lot. Um, and allows you to search and dig for your deck for the pieces that you're potentially missing. And it has potential effect negation all around. Great card, and I definitely run one of them at three. And rounding up our monsters, we don't run any hand traps, but we do run a Pranker Tops. Again, we like to establish a board presence, and having this to either potentially negate or clear something um, is is fantastic. Um, this is mostly a going second deck, all even though it has the going first potential. Um, so I have I like to run as many just going second cards. I like those. Um, next run, I place to the three visits. Definitely want to do that if you have the possibility to do so. Um, allows you to search for your deck and a potentially special summon as well. It's just all around great card. Next, we're on a playset of Burrowing Arrows. Um, I like this at three. I've seen a lot of people elect to not run it at three. I like it because I have the options with the different uh, attributes in the deck. It allows you to search um, for your Ancient Warriors cards. And that is the biggest thing. I mean, the attack drop is good and all. Um, but this is fantastic, I think, and is something I don't see myself bumping down to one anytime soon. And next, we definitely play a playset of East by South Winds. This is the, one of the new cars that came out in Rise of the Duelist. Um, you have to send it to your graveyard during the second standby phase after the activation, which is something you just want to do. Uh, but once per turn, during your main phase, toss a coin. If the result is heads, you can send it to the graveyard. So it has the ability to send itself to the graveyard, essentially, but you have plenty of other ways to send it regardless beyond that. Um, if he's set from the spell trap cards onto the graveyard, you can activate this effect. This turn, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to the activation of your Ancient Warrior cards or effects. Also, all Ancient Warrior monsters can destroy a card 
this turn when they declare an attack. Like, that is amazing, I feel, um, and it kind of reminisces me of, uh, of an ancient gear card. Um, so I, I like this fantastic at three. I don't see, this is one that I would definitely recommend running at three because it gives you the ability to feel comfortable with your plays, especially in a going second deck. You want to have the ability to extend as much as possible to potentially clear whatever board your opponent might have set up. And rounding up our Ancient uh, Warrior Saga cards, we still run one Sun Lu Alliance. Um, if you are if you control Ancient Warrior monsters with two or more different attributes, again, something you still want to kind of go for for this deck because it helps with your burrowing arrows, um, you can declare one attribute. Your opponent cannot activate the effects of those, so it's, it gives you the negation, also gives you a little bit of a boost. It's not absolutely amazing, but it still has its time and its place, and I like to have it here, again, just for at least another name of something you can activate. Uh, moving away, we do run a place of fire formation tanky. Obviously, it's a beast warrior deck with a lot of the monsters are level four or lower. Definitely want to play that as a playset. And I elect to run a playset of fire formation tensu. I see a lot of people not wanting to do this. Um, I like it a because it's a continuous spell that you can still use. B, it gives you the ability to still extend if your uh, summons are negated. Like a lot of times, you're going to go for one of the the, the generals and then you're going to summon them and then they're going to get negated so like well crap I'm just going to pass turn from here. This gives you the ability to potentially like let's say you have yourself a Lujan you try and activate its effect it gets negated but um, let's say it's just like an imperm okay so then you can bring out Sun Mu um, with just a regular normal summon of the Tensu and that gives you the ability to still have the lock where you're protected and hopefully survive until you're your next turn. It's just one of many possibilities. I feel Tensu is definitely liked in the deck. Uh, I want run one Forbidden Droplet. I, this is, I pulled one and I was like, oh, this is a cool card. Um, and I'm sure most people agree with me. Um, but you could elect to run the third Infinite Impermanence. Again, I just am trying out Forbidden Droplets. Um, realistically, just, just any card that allows you to potentially go second um, and push during that, that time it would be something I'd recommend in these in this slot. Um, these are just the three I'm electing to run right now. And then rounding up our deck, our main deck, we run want to run one of Defensive Cheng Ban. Um, it's searchable. A B gives you the ability to survive during your opponent's turn. Again, just lining a special summon from the deck, giving you the ability to attack with no res like resilience. Just having this as a name and as a potential option, I like it in the deck. You can definitely elect to cut it, um, but I like it as is. Moving on to our extra deck, we run two of Ancient Warriors Oath Double Dragon Lords. Um, I've seen plenty of people run to three. Um, I can definitely understand why you do that. This is one of the reasons why you want to I run so many wins, because it does require at least one of the wins in the deck. Let me just read his effect outright. All Ancient Warrior monsters you control gain 500 attack defense. You, can, you only use each of the following effects once per turn. If this card is Link Summoned, you can add an Ancient Warrior card from your deck to your hand. Any one that's not just monsters, it could also be spells or traps. Uh, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, target one face-up card your opponent controls, and return it to the hand. So he works wonderfully in tandem with Masterful Sun Mu. Um, if you get them both on the field, they have just ways to return everything back to hand and potentially push for game. It's just, there's a lot of times where you'll be able to extend... Um, more than you have the ability to. Like you'll have extra cards in your hand that you just can't bring out. So this A clears up that, B gives you more ability to clear the board again because that's what you want to do. You want to be able to push for games and this card for sure allows you to do that. Um, the rest of the extra deck is kind of whatever you want it to be. Um, I do have a few specific choices in here. Uh, Dermadol because it pops some back row. Uh, Cross Sheep just because it allows you to potentially extend even further if you're that kind of person. Uh, one. Tiger King, because um, just the ability to search for your fire formation spell traps is fantastic. Uh, one Baguska, because it's just a good rank four. That's what we run. These can really can be any rank fours you want to be, want to be, and you could even elect to run more of the uh, links. But these just I decided to go rank four heavy. Uh, Excite on Knight, one of the Gaga Cowboy, one of the Tornado Dragon. One of the Abyss Dweller. Sorry, it's not in the black sleeve because I, I just pulled the this beautiful ulti yesterday, and so I was like, oh well, let's throw him in a sleeve before you, you know, before you have any other option. Uh, run uh, Utopia, the Lightning, little package. 
And then we do run two rank seven still. We're, we like to run uh, the Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon and the Big Eye because you have plenty of level sevens in this deck. And so since you have that possibility, might as well run them, right? Uh, Flare Metal at least gives you the opportunity of something to end your, your turn with and gives you something that can potentially burn your opponent for game if you weren't able to do so. So that is going to round up my build of Ancient Warriors post um, Return of the Duelist. Um, let me know what you think down below. I've seen a lot of different builds. Um, this is beautiful in the fact that most of the deck you can pick up just by itself and it works so well within the archetype. I believe they are um, finished with releasing support for this, but I very well could be wrong. Let me know what other stuff if they have. Um, and just know that this is a really fun deck. It's pretty easy to pick up. And um, it's something that you can pick up immediately and understand, but you can extend your knowledge in it and do so much more just because they have a lot of effects and have are very versatile, I feel, actually. Um, just the ability to go first has it been extended because it has some quick effects now added, and you just have ability to survive going first or second and some setups that can uh, really mess with your opponent. So, yeah, uh, thank you for watching, and have a great day.